Other rivalries gain more national attention because the teams have uh, more story traditions, uh, higher rankings, and better records. But I don't know that there's a rivalry across college football that has the bad blood, the intensity, and the ferocity of Ole Miss taking on Mississippi State. It's for the Egg Bowl. And we had another really good one at Davis Wade Stadium on uh, Thanksgiving night, 31-28, Rebels pull off the upset, two-touchdown underdog. Ole Miss finishes at 6-6. Six and six. Let's take you through the plays that mattered. Mississippi State came in with a bevy of wide receiver injuries. Ole Miss with no such issue at that position. A.J. Brown proved to be a man from the very first play of the game. Too big, too fast, too big, too strong, too physical, and just way too much for the Mississippi State secondary for most of the night. He broke free. Then the touchdown run from Ole Miss to break out to a 7 to nothing lead. That was Jordan Wilkins, who ran 14 times for 110 yards. Jordan Wilkins seems like he's been on campus there in Oxford for 10 years. 7 nothing Ole Miss out of the gate. All right. We told you that we would take you through the plays that mattered. There was no play that mattered more than one in which resulted in Nick Fitzgerald being carted off the field. It was painful to watch. I can't imagine the pain that uh, Nick Fitzgerald suffered on the play. Wrapped up on the read option and the leg twisted a way in which it's not supposed to. And Nick Fitzgerald has played his last football for 2017 into 2018, unfortunately, for Mississippi State. Now, that's obviously huge, huge in this game. It could be argued, certainly there are better quarterbacks in the nation than Nick Fitzgerald. I don't know that there are more valuable players to his team than Fitzgerald. He was one for five at the moment, not off to a great start, just a 12-yard completion and one interception to Miles Hartsfield, but, of course, Fitzgerald came out of the game, and you could see the Mississippi State team deflate. But it was the defense that kept them in the game. The defense dug in against a talented Ole Miss offense. So the Rebels are not uh, a contending team, obviously, because of the probation self-inflicted this year. Uh, but also, defensively, they've been awful. But not on this night. Rivalries bring out the best. Keaton Thompson comes into the game for Nick Fitzgerald. Let's tell you about Thompson. He's a freshman, came into the program in 2017 in February. He was the fifth-rated dual-threat quarterback nationally, according to 247 Sports, number seven-rated player out of the state of Louisiana, number 105 nationally. Now, it was obvious from the start that Mississippi State had to compromise its game plan because of Thompson being in the game. He was erratic throwing the ball, was unsure, held on it to it too long in the pocket, and could make the plays that Fitzgerald made. Just doesn't have the reps. He has the talent, but not the reps. But you could see later in the game some flashes of potential brilliance in the future. And he certainly ran it 26 times for a buck 21 and one touchdown for Keaton Thompson. But it was ugly to the max early. What is not ugly is the play of Jeffrey Simmons. He is a freak. This guy battles into the backfield, repeatedly pushes the offensive linemen, disrupts running plays, passing plays. At times, there was one particular play. He didn't even know they, that he had uh, Jordan Ta'amu wrapped up. He, he blew by uh, the offensive linemen so quickly, got into the backfield that he got a shirt hold of Ta'amu and didn't know that he still had the football and still made the play. Kind of looked at him, grabbed him, threw him aside like a rag doll. Jeffrey Simmons is a man. He blocked a punt with one hand, came in, was athletic enough to, despite being blocked at the same time, reached out, blocked the punt. That should have been a huge play for Mississippi State in trying to get back in this game. It was a 10 nothing at the time, but the offense gave it right back, and this happened repeatedly. Think about this. Ole Miss forced eight turnovers in 11 games. Against Mississippi State, they forced the Bulldogs to turn it over five times. Eight in 11 games, five times tonight against Mississippi State. And, of course, much of that was due to Fitzgerald being on the shelf. 
As uh, impressive as Jeffrey Simmons was time and time again with the black punt and with the many disruptive plays in the backfield, also uh, Ole Miss uh, showed up defensively, unlike they have the entire season as well. Uh, after the uh, Jeffrey Simmons play, unfortunately, uh, Keaton Thompson airmailed one in which C.J. Moore picked it off for his third interception this season. It led to a field goal after J.T. Gray interfered with A.J. Brown. It was 10-0 Ole Miss, and it looked like Mississippi State wouldn't be able to mount enough offense with Thompson at quarterback. It just looked that ugly uh, to be able to make this a ball game. Thompson also had a fumble later on the next drive. Breland speaks. You talk about impressive. That's Simmons on the Mississippi State side, and you can see the NFL talent from Breland speaks on the Ole Miss side, most likely playing his final game at Ole Miss, uh, the fourth-year junior for the Rebels. Uh, Mississippi State, again, the defense kept them in the game despite being burned time and time again from A.J. Brown a number of times. Uh, a couple of those were brought back. Uh, the freshman. Errol Thompson, impressive on a sack. Simmons with a fumble recovery. That stopped an Ole Miss drive. And then there was a great play call with a score at 10 to 3, 15 seconds left. The Bulldogs at midfield with a fourth and five. So they could heave it long, try to kill the clock, but they still had 15 seconds left to play. And that would have turned it over to Ole Miss and allow them to throw one deep on the Hail Mary going the other direction. They threw the uh, underneath screen, middle screen, worked to perfection, got them inside the 20. Jace Chrisman kicked the field goal to make it a 10-6 game. So Mississippi State, despite the loss of losing Fitz at halftime, was just down at 10-6 at that point and weathering the storm with defense and with just enough offense. And the offense would continue to get going, but not initially. Mississippi State's left guard, Daryl Williams, went down early in the third quarter. That was key as the pass protection continued to break down. Thompson hit a big run, got uh, Mississippi State inside the 30 in the third quarter, but uh, there was a sack by Austrian Robinson, and that came from that left guard position that was vacated by Williams' injury just a few plays earlier. Regardless, Mississippi State gets a perfect punt they cover it down at the one half yard line. Great field position. They get the three and out from Ole Miss. They get tremendous field position at the 40. They move it down to the 20. What happens again? Thompson fumbles. That's uh, three fumbles in about two quarters of play from Keaton Thompson. And he was just killing the Bulldogs at this point. AJ Moore with a fumble recovery. He earlier got the interception. Freeland Speaks continue to make tremendous plays in the backfield for the Rebels. A.J. Brown gets loose again. He got loose for the initial big play on the first series. Now 77 yards on the throw and catch that was perfectly delivered right over the shoulder. He adjusted to the football. It was laid out there perfectly for him. He was able to make a hands catch, outstretched, maintain his balance, still beat the DB to the end zone for 77 yards, and a 17-6 Rebels lead. Thompson on a third and four gets the conversion. So even when he was hanging on to the ball and making plays as he started to do in the third quarter, bad things still happening for the bullies. Thompson, third and four conversion to Jordan Thomas. He picks up a huge gain down the middle, gets it inside Ole Miss's 45 yard line. What's he do? Coughs it up. Taylor Polk with a tremendous strip from behind. Montreal Custis re re uh, recovered the fumble and Ole Miss again. Eight turnovers caused by the defense in 11 games, five on this night in Starkville. Mississippi State on the next possession. Just a few plays later, after they cough it up, Jamal Peters, cornerback for Mississippi State, hit a perfect pick six opportunity. He just had one against uh, Texas A&M a few weeks ago in a 35-14 win at Kyle Field, but he dropped the probable pick six, and it just looked like nothing was happening right for Mississippi State. Fitzgerald goes down, their leader, their playmaker, basically their offense, and they were this close to making a number of plays that would have kept them in the game and would have possibly given them the lead, and they just weren't making them. So it just didn't seem like it was Mississippi State's night. DK Metcalf gets by Lashard Durr for a huge play in the touchdown down the left sideline. 24-6 to Rebels. They're running away at this point. 
There's only 12 minutes left in the game at this point. Okay, McLaurin gets an interception for Mississippi State, and this gave them a fresh breath of life. 12 minutes left in the game. They get the interception off Jordan Ta'amu, and then Thompson throws a touchdown pass and make it 24-13. to Then it looks like Mississippi State's in decent shape to give it a go. 24-13. They just scored the touchdown after the interception. Thompson finally getting into a rhythm, throwing the ball. Then what happens? They have the onside kick that looked like it was executed to perfection, but it was touched and caught just at about the nine and three quarter yard line. Illegal touching and Ole Miss gets a football before you know it on a third and long when Mississippi State appears as though they're going to get the punt. Jordan Wilkins gone. Jordan Wilkins again, 46 yards on that play for the touchdown, two touchdowns on the night, 14 carries, 110 yards for the Ole Miss running back. 31 to 13, game's gone, right? It's history, the Egg Bowl, upset for Ole Miss. Not quite yet. Between Kylan Hill, who ran for 82 yards and a 30-yard touchdown, and the playmaking of Thompson, again, 121 on the ground and a touchdown, one TD through the air, hit on 13 of 27. Now, most of that was late, late, late in the game for 195 yards. He started to feel it. Mississippi State scored twice in the final four and a half minutes. Once after the Jordan Wilkins touchdown, they had to drive the length of the field. Then they get the ball back on a short field and go the distance to make it 31-28. Unfortunately, as happened two other times, the onside kick was unsuccessful. Ole Miss hangs on for the win, 31-28. to Okay, what does this mean? Well, for the Rebels, the season's over, but Matt Luke made this about as special of a season for Ole Miss as could possibly be achieved under the conditions. No bowl for the Rebels. They're under probation. They're going to review, of course, the job that Matt Luke turned in. As we have seen time and time again, whether it's Ed Ogeron, who did it both at LSU and at USC, and with a few other interim coaches, he won over the locker room. But is that going to be enough to convince the administration to give Matt Luke the job permanently. We shall see in the next few weeks. He, of course, was asked that after the game on the broadcast, and it's time to celebrate. It's not time to ask those questions. I know that the reporter has to ask that question, but Matt Luke or no other sane coach in that place is going to uh, offer up an answer because he doesn't know. He wants the job. It's up to the administration. He's done his job. He's led the Rebels to six wins in 12 games and some impressive showings recently in the SEC. This upset win on the road, sure, it had a lot to do with Nick Fitzgerald being injured and on the sideline, but Ole Miss pulls off the upset here. They only lose by a touchdown against a decent Texas A&M team last week. They beat Kentucky, who's going to a bowl game at uh, currently 7-4. and four. So the Rebels... Improved on defense throughout the season under Matt Luke, and the offense, despite losing Shea Patterson, one of the very best in the SEC. That's the story for the Rebels. For Mississippi State, they finish up at 8-4. and four. It looked like it was going to be 9-3 and three as a two-touchdown favorite in this one, but uh, their bowl situation could be in doubt. Obviously, they're going somewhere for the postseason, but uh, how impressive... How attractive are they going to be for a bowl site considering Nick Fitzgerald's on the shelf? They just lost to Ole Miss. They're eight and four. They are missing their starting quarterback. So the Capital One or what is now the Citrus Bowl again in Florida and the Outback, probably out for Mississippi State. We will see where they land coming up next Sunday. And also Dan Mullen, his future up in the air. He's done a tremendous job in more than a decade in Starkville. And uh, the suitors at Tennessee and Florida could be coming after Dan Mullen. He, of course, has ties to the University of Florida. My thoughts on Ole Miss and Mississippi State. The Egg Bowl goes to the Rebels in a upset win, 31-28. to 28. Need to hear from you now. I'm Mark Rogers, TV.